So that sort of uh, completes the discussion of the compressive strength of rock in terms of just the overview. Now, we're certainly going to come back to that and solve problems, applications, specifically with the more Coulomb model applied to well bores. Okay. Um, but now we're just briefly going to talk about the tensile strength of rocks. Okay. So everything we've been talking about is related to the compressive strength of rocks, or how rocks will deform and fail in compression. Now we're going to talk about tension. Well, what have I told you so far about tension? The tension strength of a rock. <coughs> Much weaker. Basically zero, right? Therefore, the tensile strength of rocks is relatively unimportant. And that concludes the discussion <laughs> on the tensile strength of rocks. Not quite, but. So the reason, of course, is that it's unimportant is because it's relatively low compared to the compressive strength, right? We've said that many times. And again, that's, that's apparent when you look at those yield surfaces of the models. They, they extend very far in compression and, ver and come to a point in tension, right? So they're very, very low tensile strength. And another reason it's not important is that when you consider a large enough volume of rock, like the sizes of rock that we want to do analysis. So if, if you're going to use, say, a finite element model and you know, do some geomechanical analysis of a reservoir, your characteristic grid size or your characteristic element is going to be on the order, likely, if you're trying to model the entire reservoir, it's going to be on the order of meters to tens of meters, right? Like the size of this room would be one characteristic element size. Well, if I go out anywhere in the world and cut out a piece of rock the size of this room, there's going to be millions of flaws in it, right? and possibly tens or hundreds of very, very large flaws. Okay? And so those very, very large flaws that already exist in any real rock also contribute to the low tensile strength. Because if I pull on this very large volume of rock full of flaws, I'm immediately just going to activate those flaws. They're going to coalesce to the surface and create a crack. If they're not already completely coalesced, and you know there's a fault all the way through there. So that's another reason. And the last reason is something we've talked about before also. That there's really hardly ever tensile stress in the Earth. Okay, It's almost always in compressor. There is one time when we do put the Earth into tension, and that's, uh, I mean, that's not to say there's never tensile stress naturally. There can be in localized regions around faults and other things. It can happen. Um, but the, the more common example is when we, humans, intervene and we intentionally put the earth in compression, I mean in tension, and that's with hydraulic fracture. Okay? And so I'm just mentioning it here. At the, you know, later on in the class, I'm going to have multiple lectures on hydraulic fracturing. Okay? But with respect to hydraulic fracturing, or with respect, we don't really talk about things in terms of stress, at least not right at the tip of the crack, and that's because at the tip of a crack, the stress is undefined, right? Because remember, stress is related to strain, right? And strain, what you know, at least in one dimension, strain is like partial u, partial x, where u is displacement. So at the tip of a crack, the tip of a crack represents a discontinuity in displacement, a jump in displacement. And so the partial, the strain cannot be evaluated at the tip of the crack, at least not mathematically. Right? So there's a discontinuity there. I can't take a partial derivative with respect to space at a discontinuity. So there's a singularity in my strain field, which means you know, if my strain, in, at least in a, for an elastic material, my strain is proportional to the stress, then my stress is undefined. Okay? So at the tip of a crack, the stress as we know it is undefined. And therefore, this whole field of mechanics called fracture mechanics was born to deal with that. And so typically, we characterize the stress field at the tip of a crack through something called a stress intensity factor. Okay? So here, we, we typically use the symbol K. And the 1, K1, represents that it's an opening mode fracture. Right? So we can have, can have three different types of modes. Right? We can have a crack that opens like this. That's the one that we typically 
induced when we're doing hydraulic fracturing. Uh, but you can also have um, a sliding mode, a sliding mode, and you can also have a shear mode like this. Right, so if I were to take a crack and pull on it like that, I can just so uh, so that's mode one, two, and three. And what we typically say is that the crack will propagate when the stress intensity factor exceeds some critical value. And so that's K1C. So the critical value is stress intensity factor. Okay, When that's exceeded, uh, the crack will propagate. And K1C is a material property. Right? So it's just like Young's modulus or Poisson ratio or anything else. It's a material property. Okay? And while it's often true that high strength materials are high, you know, we typically say high strength, what we're talking about is stiff materials. Materials with high Young's modulus, right? Uh, or when we talk about you know, true strength, that's the failure point of the material. While it's, while it's typically true that you know, strong materials are also fractured, have high fracture toughness, that's not always true. Um, you know, that is true in terms of like steel. Steels are very strong materials and also for the most part have high fracture toughness values. But a counterexample is a ceramic. A ceramic is, is in terms of compressive strength is much stronger than steel. But they also have very, very low fracture toughness values. So they're very brittle materials. So they're, they're really, they're independent material properties. They're not related to the strength of the material in any way. Okay, so, um, well, I shouldn't say they're not related. They're, they're, not, they're not, not related to the magnitude of the strength in any way. They're, they're related in an energetic way in the sense that they're related in the area under the stress strain curve. Okay. But um, anyway, for an elliptic crack like we typically idealize in the Earth, where you have some overburdened stress, S3, or you know, not necessarily overburdened, but the, the stress that's counteracting the opening of the crack, and then you have some internal pore pressure, PF, then we can, uh, then the stress intensity factor is equal to uh, that net difference uh, times pi times the square root of L, and so then if you look, if you plot this, uh, that that effective the pressure minus S3 as a function of fracture length, you'll see that for very, very small fracture lengths, this is what we call a toughness dominated regime. So for very small fracture lengths, the net, you know, the, the, the actual value of fracture toughness matters a lot and you need much higher net effective stress to induce fracture. For very short fractures, you need very high effective stress, and that's because the toughness matters a lot, okay? But if you look at this equation, it's got the square root of L in it, right? So that effect decays because the value of the stress intensity factor decays as you get very long fracture lengths, with, you know, because it's, it's, it's attenuated by the square root of L. So if you have very, very long fracture lengths, then the fracture toughness doesn't matter as much. And eventually, to the extent that only the net pressure difference matters, you know, for you can have very, very strong rocks or very, very weak rocks, and, and for low, you know, as you, if you kind of continue the sauna asymptotically, you'd say that eventually there's some net pressure that would cause both of them to fracture at the same value. I mean, it's not; it has nothing to do with the, the, the um, fracture toughness. So, you know, to initiate fractures, the toughness matters a lot. But once the cracks reach some length, then just the net pressure dominates. Okay. 